Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I am Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. Our 870th day in the Word of God brings us to Jeremiah chapter 4. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, your Word is perfect. Please write it on our hearts as we consider it together. And may you draw us closer to yourself and make us more like Jesus, our Savior. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Jeremiah 4. If you return, O Israel, declares the Lord, to me you should return. If you remove your detestable things from my presence and do not waver, and if you swear as the Lord lives in truth, in justice, and in righteousness, then nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him they shall glory. For thus says the truth, for thus says the Lord, to the men of Judah and Jerusalem. He is the truth, but it says the Lord. For thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Remove the foreskin of your hearts, O men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my wrath go forth like fire and burn with none to quench it because of the evil of your deeds. Declare in Judah, and proclaim in Jerusalem and say, blow the trumpet through the land, cry aloud and say, assemble and let us go into the fortified cities, raise a standard towards Zion, flee for safety, stay not. For I bring disaster from the north and great destruction. A lion has gone up from his thicket. A destroyer of nations has set out. He has gone out from his place to make your land a waste. Your cities will be ruins without inhabitant. For this, put on sackcloth, lament, and wail. For the fierce anger of the Lord has not turned back from us. In that day, declares the Lord, courage shall fail both king and officials. The priests shall be appalled, and the prophets astounded. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, surely you have utterly deceived this people and Jerusalem, saying, It shall be well with you, whereas the sword has reached their very life. At that time it will be said to this people and to Jerusalem, A hot wind from the bare heights in the desert toward the daughter of my people, not to winnow or cleanse. A wind too full for this comes for me. Now it is I who speak in judgment upon them. Behold, he comes up like clouds. His chariots like the whirlwind, his horses are swifter than eagles. Woe to us, for we are ruined. O oh, Jerusalem, wash your heart from evil that you may be saved. How long shall your wicked thoughts lodge within you? For a voice declares from Dan and proclaims trouble from Mount Ephraim. Warn the nations that he is coming. Announce to Jerusalem, besiegers come from a distant land. They shout against the cities of Judah. Like keepers of a field are they against her all around, because she has rebelled against me, declares the Lord. Your ways and your deeds have brought this upon you. This is your doom, and it is bitter. It has reached your very heart. My anguish. My anguish. I writhe in pain. Oh, the walls of my heart. My heart is beating wildly. I cannot keep silent. For I hear the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Crash follows hard on crash. The whole land is laid waste. Suddenly my tents are laid waste, my curtains in a moment. How long must I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? For my people are foolish. They know me not, they are stupid children, they have no understanding. They are wise in doing evil, but how to do good, they know not. I looked on the earth, and behold, it was without form and void, and to the heavens, and they had no light. I looked on the mountains, and behold, they were quaking. And all the hills moved to and fro. I looked, and behold, there was no man. And all the birds of the air had fled. 
I looked, and behold, the fruitful land was a desert, and all its cities were laid in ruins before the Lord, before his fierce anger. For thus says the Lord, the whole land shall be a desolation, yet I will not make a full end. For this the earth shall mourn, and the heavens above be dark. For I have spoken, I have purposed, I have relented, nor will I turn back. At the noise of horsemen and archer, every city takes to flight. They enter thickets, they climb among rocks. All the cities are forsaken, and no man dwells in them. And you, O desolate one, what do you mean that you dress in scarlet, that you adorn yourself with ornaments of gold, that you enlarge your eyes with paint, in vain you beautify yourself. Your lovers despise you. They seek your life. For I heard a cry as of a woman in labor, anguish as of one giving birth to her first child, the cry of the daughter of Zion, gasping for breath, stretching out her hands. Woe is me. I am fainting before murderers. That's Jeremiah chapter 4. What a... Mm. You know, Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. The one who laments. He's the most emotional of all of the prophets. And, and it's hard. It's hard to read these passages without just aching at the distress. But this is, this is a reflection of the heart of God. God is truth. God is absolutely sovereign. God is unopposable in his strength. He's perfectly wise. He knows the end from the beginning. He's omniscient. All of that, yes. And sometimes we can picture that about God and think that, you know, things don't bother him, right? And, you know, using a little bit of anthropomorphic language here, but clearly, Jeremiah 4, the heart of God is reflected in, in the Spirit's work in the heart of Jeremiah, is greatly distressed at the sin of his people. My people are foolish. They know me not. They're stupid children. They have no understanding. They're wise in doing evil, but how to do good they know not. Verse 22. Here in this chapter, we've shifted a little bit from focusing on the relationship between God and his people as that between a husband and wife, and a little bit more of the focus on we are the children of God. We are his children. And this is more of how you respond, you know, as a parent if you're a parent and you have children, you've probably had experiences where your children did something dumb. Something that they weren't, they weren't thinking it through. They weren't being responsible. They weren't being wise. They weren't being obedient, whatever it may be. And they've suffered some consequence. And in a sense, you know, of course, they have to suffer the consequence if they're going to learn their lesson. And you pray that as they suffer the consequence, they are, in fact, learning their lesson and not just hardening their heart and going to do something even more stupid the next time, right? Because that's how it goes sometimes, right? We do bad things. It blows up in our face. We can either be humble and repentant and contrite and realize this happened because I was dumb and I was idiotic and I was foolishly disobedient. I'm not going to do that again. Or we can get mad at God and we can say, why did this have to happen to me? Why me, right? And go either way when bad things happen. Here, God is seeing his people in distress at the conquer, conquering force of an enemy. And he longs for his, for his foolish, stupid children to wise up. Now, not just be wise in doing evil. They're wise. Oh, they think they're so wise. We'll make an alliance with Assyria. And if that doesn't work out, we'll make an alliance with Egypt. We'll pray to Baal. And if that doesn't work out, we'll also pray pray to the Philistine gods, and we'll also pray to the Egyptian gods. We'll bring them in. We'll have God. We'll have Yahweh as well. We'll keep the temple and the Levites and the sacrifices there. But as a backup plan, right, we might put it like, I'm going to trust God for this, but I'm also going to make sure that if God doesn't come through for me, I'm not going to be left wanting. So I'm going to buy a lottery ticket <laughs> or I'm going to you know, cheat on my taxes a little bit so I can get more money back than I'm supposed to. Or I will, you know, neglect my family to work extra uh, to try to get that promotion 
that will take me away from my family and my church responsibilities even more because what I think I need is more money rather than to understand better what to do with what has God has given me or, or whatever. There's 101 different options and I don't know where you are and what you're struggling with. But God cares about his people, even though he's the one disciplining them, even though he's the one who's bringing Judah's desolation, when, when Judah is devastated by the Assyrians first, and then later by the Babylonians, and then Jerusalem is laid siege, and exiles are dragged off, Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, when, when, when kings are have their eyes gouged out and are taken away to Babylon, the Lord is doing that. The Lord is the one doing that. He's disciplining his people, and yet even as he's disciplining his people, he's not doing so because he wants to, from the heart, afflict his people because he enjoys seeing his people in pain. He hates seeing his people in pain. My anguish, my anguish, I writhe in pain. Oh, the walls of my heart, my heart is beating wildly. I cannot keep silent. It would be like if you had a prodigal child who was really going astray and you decided, I'm just going to have to let them face the consequences of their actions and they end up in jail. And you were to go visit them in prison. Your heart would be absolutely devastated. Even though maybe at some point you could have done something that would have stopped it, but you're deciding to let them make their choices and live with the consequences. And then you're, but God is wise. God always knows what he's doing. The consequences for the idolatry and the unfaithfulness is Babylonian conquest and exile, because it's the only thing that's going to break his people of their idolatry. But it's bitter. It's bitter. God doesn't enjoy it. God doesn't enjoy when terrible things happen to us, even though he's sovereignly in control of them, and even though we need them. He doesn't delight in it. He would much rather bless us. He would much rather see us flourish. He would much rather see us thriving and see us happy but he's not going to be a foolish parent like i know some parents who are like the only thing i care about is that my child is happy so the child gets in trouble in school and they go and they yell at the teacher and they say why are you giving my child a hard time my child never does anything wrong my child is perfect you're the problem right i hope you know that's bad parenting right and that doesn't that doesn't help the child in the end those children usually end up the worst dysfunctional of all because they can never take responsibility for their own actions. God's not going to be a parent like that. He's going to allow us to suffer the consequences of our actions. Sometimes he's going to bring things into our lives that are just super hard and beyond our ability to understand or control so that we will learn how to depend on him, so that we will learn how to stay close to him, so that we will learn how to look to him. But we need to know that when he's doing that, he does not take delight in it. He is not rejoicing in it. He knows the anguish of his people. And he wishes, in a sense, right, that we had never gone down this road. But he will see it through to the end for our good and for his glory. Because he's good. And we can trust him. So whatever you're going through. If you've been through some hard things, if you're going through some hard things now, if you've got hard things coming in the future, call upon the Lord. Draw near to him. Depend upon him. Don't let those hard things harden your heart to God. And know that God does not delight in the difficulty that you are enduring, even though he is sovereign over it, and he intends good for you in it. He's not smiling and laughing about it. His heart is in anguish at your anguish. And he wants you to call upon him. Let's pray. Oh, Lord God, how often we suffer because of our own stupidity. I just say that very frankly. At 50 years old, I can look back on my life and see how many times I have suffered because of my own stupidity, my own arrogance, hard-heartedness, disobedience, callousness, foolishness, presumption, Thank you that sometimes you bring really, really hard things into our lives so we'll learn and so we'll grow. May we learn and grow. Thank you for loving us enough. You don't leave us comfortable in our sin. You don't leave us comfortable with our idols. 
Thank you for pursuing us in love. Thank you for calling us to yourself. Thank you for saving us through such a wonderful Savior as Jesus our Lord. Keep our hearts seeking yours through it all. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. That's Jeremiah 4. Ah, what a powerful book. Tomorrow we're taking a break from Jeremiah. We'll jump over to Proverbs and pick up Proverbs 24. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Thank you.